Okay, we are live, and you're listening to Here I Am, Lord. My name is Father Dan Hohen. Uh, the name of the program, in case you're wondering, why is it called Here I Am, Lord? That was the response of the prophets who uh, heard God's call, and as I always say, God calls each and every one of us. We all have a calling. The Latin word is vocare, vocation. That's where we get the word vocation. That God calls each and every one of us to uh, a specific plan, a specific, um, <clears throat> a specific journey in our life, I guess you could say. So in the past, if you've uh, tuned into this program, you know that I've had priests and seminarians, and, we, and we've explored their specific calling to the priesthood, um, to the religious life. Uh, today, a little bit of a departure, but we're with uh, Mr. Zachary King in the studio. Zachary has a very interesting past. First of all, I want to say uh, good morning and, and welcome to the to the show, Zachary. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being here. Um, I hope you're appreciating our Chicago weather. How was it uh, in Florida when you left? Uh, I think it was um, probably like 75 degrees and <laughs> yeah. sunny, so. right, as always. <clears throat> always. Well, that's good. It's usually bright and sunny here in the studios of Radio Maria, too. <laughs> so... Um, Zachary, I don't know if um, I don't know if you've uh, if you've ever heard of uh, Zachary, and that's why we're that's why we're here. We're going to talk about uh, his story. So, uh, Zachary, you're here speaking at a conference. First of all, in the Chicago area in Arlington Heights for the next uh, couple of days, you'll be you'll be at um, um, it's the Come Holy Spirit conference in uh, in Arlington Heights, and that begins uh, to, uh, tomorrow night, right? Tomorrow uh, night. Friday. Friday, yeah, 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 Friday, yep, <laughs> tomorrow night, Friday, and then... All my days run together. Yeah, that's, you've got quite a schedule, I think, you're, you're doing, I know while you're here in the area, you're doing a lot of, a lot of speaking, so hopefully we don't wear you out here today, <laughs> and, uh, um, so, yeah, if you can, uh, if you want to stop by the Come Holy Spirit Conference, we'll get you more information on that coming up, but that's in Arlington Heights on uh, Friday, and begins Friday night and Saturday, but uh, we're, we're grateful to have uh, Zachary here, so... As I said, the the point of this program, everybody has a calling, and how do we know what God is calling us to? Sometimes it's very clear. St. <laughs> Paul was on the road uh, to Damascus to persecute the Christians, and the call came kind of out of the blue, so to speak. It became uh, very clear to him that he was on the wrong road, that, uh, that you know, our Lord said to him, Saul, why do you persecute me? I always... I always I'm struck by the fact that Jesus didn't say, why are you persecuting my people? Why are you persecuting my church? But he took it very personally. Why are you persecuting me? <laughs> and that's a challenge for us to recognize Christ in every single person, to recognize that what we, as he said, <laughs> what you do unto the least of my brothers, you do to me. So, uh, Zachary, maybe just a little bit of your story. I don't know how you want to, we can, um, maybe I'll just let you <laughs> do the talk, and I want to, I want to make sure that uh, we get your story uh, t uh, told without me interrupting too much. So, can you just give me a little background? Where to, you know how did um, you start? A little bit about me. Um, I got started when I was ten years old, and uh, I know that uh, your listeners are probably like, "Oh my God!" You know, Satan attacked you when you're ten years old. Yeah, wait. You know what? We should back up. I didn't even say <laughs> that you were involved <laughs> in the World Church of Satan. So we have to. We have to start with that. So your people are probably wondering, involved in what? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. In the Zachary was heavily, very much involved with the World Church of Satan, right? And that's, that's a, correct. That's uh, uh, for twenty six years total. Wow. Um, when I got started, ten years old, I got sucked in by. Um, there's a, a. It's a spell, really, but it's considered a children's game. Uh, mm -hmm. It's called "I Hate You, Bloody Mary." Mm -hmm. um, and it's I'll I'll spare I'll spare your listeners the actual details of it. But the <laughs> the the end result is you see a demon's face in a mirror, mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't work every time. I mean, there's kids that have said that they tried it when they were a kid, nothing ever happened. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't one of those kids. I saw a demon almost every time. Wow. Um, I was also playing Dungeons and Dragons at the time. It had just come out like I think two years prior to that. Mm. And uh, and there's people as well that say that, you know, they played that for years and nothing ever happened. Hmm. And then there's other people that have like a similar story to what I have. Mm -hmm. Probably not as graphic as me. I mean, I'm um, I'm kind of an extremist, uh, so I'll, I will go all in. It's either, it's either all in or don't go. <laughs> and, and, and that's my attitude about a lot of things. You know, it's like that was my attitude with Satanism. 
You know, it's like I'm either going to go full in mm. and I'm going to do this magic and I'm going to worship Satan and I'm going to be the best Satanist that I can be or I'm not going to play at all. Mm. And thankfully, I still have that attitude because now yeah. I'm Catholic. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. Like I'm going to be fully into Catholicism yeah. and, you know, and, and I'm going to be all about Mary and the angels and the saints yeah. or I'm not going to be. Yeah. You know, and thankfully yeah. I have the extreme attitude and, and I am totally, you know, totally on the same page. Yeah. Um, so that progressed to, um, I found a, a, a satanic coven that believed magic was real. Well, of course they would. Um, when I was 12, um, okay. I was fully involved in a coven by the time I was 13. I was a full member. Um, then when I was uh, 17 or 18, I actually found a, you know, I, I was moving away to college. And I, I grew up in a small town. And even in that small town, I was a member in a. I was a member in a coven that had probably a hundred members. Hmm. In a small wow. Okay. In a small town. Okay. I mean, we had there were people from all all around, you know, other small towns but, that would join in with ours and and mostly young people like yourself or were they, um no, no no it was a lot of adults. Interesting. Um, okay. You know, I was like thirteen years old, and hmm. any any type of decadent vice you can think of that would hmm. happen. Hmm. happened to these things all right now there's just the, the question here was it like prominent individuals in the community or maybe you some, didn't even know some okay. some um right, we had for a while we had um we had some political figures interesting and and we did spell spells for them so that they would rise in prominence or at least keep their positions that they had hmm. Hmm. wow when i was um 18 i found out that uh because i mean you know when you're when you're a kid you don't realize that things are bigger or the scope is bigger than than you i mean like an example of that was i was probably you know and now that now there wouldn't be an issue because now we have the internet now kids are a lot more aware of things yeah. around them yeah. but when i was um eight years old which would have been like 1974 mm -hmm. i didn't realize that uh football teams were all over the united states okay because everything i watched was broadcast in florida hmm. so i thought all these teams are in Florida. And I know that sounds naive and, you know. Right, right. But think, it's 1974. Right, right. You know, it's like we're not really aware of, of everything like kids are today. Right. So when I became 18 years old and I went off to college, it was like Satanism was everywhere. Huh. You know, it was like in, in the small town I grew up, it was very private. It was very secretive. Uh -huh. When I got to college, there was no secret. I mean, it's like, you want to belong to a Satanist cult? Wow. Hey, right here. Come wow. join over here. Hey, we've got 12 groups right here. Which one do you want to belong to? Hmm. You know, and I found the one that I was comfortable in, and yeah. and that one happened to have worldwide ties. Okay. Interesting. So, all right, this is 74. No, yeah, 70, no, this, this would have been, oh, yeah, you, you, this would have been yeah, yeah. 19, around 1984, 85. Yeah, huh. Uh, boy, I don't think it's changed any on campuses, has it? <laughs> Too it's much. gotten worse. Ay, ay, ay. Wow, now that's that's very scary. So, but you were attracted somehow. There was something about this, like you said, you were kind of a... Um, yeah. Power. Yeah, yeah. Power, money, sex. Yeah. Um, yeah. Power is the big thing, though. I mean, if yeah. you've got power, you can get anything else you right. want. Right, right. Huh. All right, so then... Um, I'm, all right, so you get involved in this, uh, on campus there, in this... Um, did they all go by different names? You said there were there were numerous ones. I mean, were, what was the difference, the distinction between the uh, the various um, ones? It's yeah. there's like a difference in what they want. Okay. Um, so. Some some groups, all they want to do is party. Yeah. And I wasn't really interested in. I mean, I like to party as much as the next person, but that wasn't my focus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like to practice magic. Huh. And I like to I like to to do things that involve magic because it made me seem and feel powerful. So you, at this point, had, had already had some success with some of the magic that you've seen? I, I started in magic when I was 10 years old. Uh -huh. And, you know, and, and at that time, doing the, the um, I Hate You Bloody Mary is really a spell. Yeah. So every time you do it, and a demon face appears, mm -hmm. you feel like you're more successful because yeah. you did the you, spell. You've conjured up this. Right, you've uh, conjured up yeah, this demon. Yeah. Now, when you first start playing it, there's a big group of you. Mm -hmm. But eventually, like, okay, they sent notes home at school stating that if you kids were involved in this game, you'd be suspended. Okay. You know, my dad asked me, you know, are you involved in this game? <laughs> and at that time, I was going to Baptist church, you know, and I'm a good little, you know, Baptist boy. And I'm yeah. like, no, dad, I would never do something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I was scared of being suspended and scared of my dad's belt as well. 
And uh, so I started doing the game at home, hmm. you know, in the bathroom. I'm the only person there. Yeah. yeah. And I'm able by myself to conjure up a demon face. Yeah. And I'm feeling, you know, 10 years old. Wow. wow, you know, look what I can do. Now, for those who think, well, maybe he was hallucinating or something, I know you <laughs> mentioned before, in the school, the reason they sent a note home was because of the kind of yeah. the stampede that would occur, yeah, right? The, uh, the a demon face would appear in the mirror, yeah. and the kids would, like, uh, yeah. kill themselves to get out of the room. <laughs> get out of there. And so many children were like, like, I I didn't know of the incident, but but in the, I think in the note they wrote home that, that, that somebody broke their leg. Oh, Wow. Like fell down and got trampled and oh, got a broken leg out of it. Oh my goodness. Wow. Because it was so frightening and then Yeah, because <laughs> it was so frightening. So I mean it was it was so such a big deal at school, it happened so often mm-hmm. that they sent a note home to all however many seven hundred kids or something. Mm-hmm. Wow. Holy cow. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a little bit on the one hand, I'm curious what did the face look like? On the other hand, I want to be careful about <laughs> being too curious, you know, when a when a priest performs an exorcism, he has to be very careful not to ask questions that are not necessary, you know, out of <laughs> curiosity. So I don't, I don't know. We don't, it, I don't it was think. not attractive. <laughs> it, it almost looked like it was, um, for lack of another term, burnt. It burnt. Oh. It was very dark black oh. and uh, dark black, dark brown, um, a little green. Well, that would be appropriate. Burnt, you know, our Lord speaks of the fires of hell many, many times, or the, you know, speaks of fire. <laughs> then, then they weren't attractive, but when, what, uh, another thing that drew me to it was that it didn't seem to want to hurt me. Hmm, that's interesting. It was just there. It was like it would appear sometimes small, sometimes large, but um, it would just show up. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it didn't talk to me. It didn't. Did it, it never said anything. Never said anything to me. Huh. You know, and it didn't seem to want to hurt me, so I I wasn't scared of it. And that's amazing. Uh, you know, you would think a ten year old kid would be scared to death. You know, I, <laughs> I, I, read, I, I read The Exorcist when I was ten years old. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah, it's interesting. All right, I know we're gonna we're gonna have to take a break here in about a minute. But um, all right, so I want when we come back, I want to uh, find out more about as you. Uh, you know, so what happened next as you're as you're learning that there is. That there is power here. That you're, you know, you're. Yeah, it seems to me there's kind of like uh, you, uh, you start to become addicted. I think to the to the power. It sounds like or there's, absolutely. There's, yeah, there's a, this great a, a great attraction to the power. Huh. That's uh, that is frightening. <laughs> now you know we were, we were talking about this before, and I've mentioned to a few other kids or other excuse me adults. <clears throat> you know, have they? Have they ever heard of this game? And everybody has heard, it seems like people have heard of this uh, in one form or another, different names, but uh, uh, under different uh, uh, under different ways. But um, interesting. All right, we're going to take a break, and we're going to be right back. We're talking with uh, Zachary King about the, his experience with the World Church of Satan. Stay with us, and we'll be back right after this. Thanks. Okay, welcome back. You're listening to Here I Am, Lord. I am uh, in the studio. My name is Father Dan Hohen. I'm in the studio with Zachary King. Zachary was heavily involved in the World Church of Satan for 26 years. Mm, my goodness. <laughs> and experienced a profound conversion. And we'll get to that. That was a, that was a miracle in, in itself. Earlier I mentioned St. Paul. You know, he was on the wrong road persecuting the Christians. It was like a, you know, an instantaneous thing with Paul. And, it's, and it sounds, Zachary, it was very similar to you, uh, with you, uh, with regard to your conversion. But before we get to that, let's continue along this wrong road, like Paul <laughs> was on the wrong road. Uh, so you were, um, uh, so you, it began with uh, this this game that the kids used to play, conjuring up an, an evil face in the in the mirror. Uh, I don't know, I don't remember if you ever mentioned the Ouija board. Was that ever a part of it, the Ouija board? Cause that's a- uh, I've used a Ouija board many times. Yeah. Um, uh, I can't stress how dangerous those are. You know, I mean, if you've, you know, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, I've got a Ouija board at home, go yeah. home and throw that yeah. away. Yeah, burn it even. Burn it. Or, yeah. Um, yeah. If, you know, douse it in holy salt and holy water before yeah. you do it, and then, yeah. and then burn it. Yeah. Uh, throwing it away really is, is a bad thing because somebody else might find it. Yeah. Uh, when you buy these things, they come with a visitor. Hmm. Uh, and that visitor, I'll just go ahead and tell you, it's a yeah. demon. Yeah. And, you know, it's not the spirit of your uncle that you're conjuring up. Hmm. You know, you're wondering, well, this guy seems to know everything about me. Well, yeah. Satan does. He knows, yeah. Yeah. you know, if Satan himself doesn't know, yeah. a demon knows. Huh. 
Yeah, interesting. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just like you've got a guardian angel, I'm sure there's a demon that hangs around you too. Yeah, yeah, and we know from the story of Job that conversation that begins at the very beginning of the story between God and Satan that Satan has access, that God permits Satan to know certain things. You know, have you seen my servant Job? There's no one more righteous than he. You know, that, that Satan knows all about Job, that God permits certain things. The, the devil is not omniscient. He doesn't know everything. Right. So certain things can be hidden from him, uh, thankfully, <laughs> by the grace thankfully, of God. Yes. He doesn't know everything. Uh, you know, it, to me, it seems that's kind of the way he tests us, that it's like, well, let's see how he handles this temptation. You know, like Job, he wasn't sure. He, you know, he was so in his pride, it seemed to me. He was so sure, I'll get him to blaspheme, you know, take away mm-hmm. his wealth, his possessions, and he'll blaspheme. And, and God said, okay, you can test him. You know, so Satan wasn't so sure. He, he had to test. It seems to me with our temptations that, you know, when we give in to the, 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 the temptation, kind of sets up a red flag, it seems to me, that Satan, you know, then he'll you know, keep hammering away at that. But, you know, something that shows how foolish Satan is, yeah. is that God knows everything. Yeah. So God would know that Job isn't going to do this. Right. I mean, he knows the, right. the, the right. past, the future, the present, you know, all of that. So right. you know, he knows Job isn't going to. And how stupid is Satan that he's like, you know, oh, I'll get him to. And it's like, God knows he's not going to. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. On the other hand, though, God knows when we're going to. And I, I mentioned this in the, a lot of times in the confessional that. God knows when we're going to fail the test, when we're going to give in to the temptation and nonetheless gives the permission to test. Uh, you know, my point there always is, you know, that one of the things with our with our sinfulness that we, we need to be convicted of is our, is our weakness, that we cannot, <laughs> uh, you know, as Paul recognizes in his letter to the Romans, you know, the good that I want to do, I'm not able to do, but the evil that I hate, I find myself doing, who will save me from this wretched uh, body, that, God, I mean, I don't know if you ever thought about this, but God permits the test even when he knows we're going to (laughs) fail. But we need that. Yeah, that's that's my point, that he shows us. You know, if we never failed, if we, you know, it seems to me we're going to say, well, what do I need God for? Look how, (laughs) look what I can do on my own. You know, that, that the humility, so the counter to Satan's I would say his his, his 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 most evil his biggest vice is the, you know his pride you know it's how right you know, it's how he how he and became that's, the that's, devil yeah that's yeah. Where he, why he's in yeah. the position he's yeah. in yeah you know the the disobedience of Adam and Eve that seems to me that stems from their pride I want to be like God and deciding right from wrong you know that pride the first of the deadly sins so yeah that's interesting Satan does he think I used to think and I don't anymore but I used to think that Satan thought he was going to win the battle in the end and i don't think that's the i don't think that's um, the case the when you're at like the um i have a i have a dvd that we just came out with it's um a pyramid scheme and it it covers like the different levels of satanism as you rise up and then it also compares satanism to new age religion hmm. and it, as well compares like what what level you know when you do certain things at this level and, and the next level and you know on up um in the first level of satanism when you're when you're just introduced, um, you know, and you you figure out that there's a guy named Anton Lavey that ran the first Church of Satan, okay, and uh, uh, you know, and you figure out the books that he's got out and 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 all the different things. Um, when you're at that first level, you think that Satan is all powerful, and you think that um, you know Christians are scared of Satan. Obviously, look mm-hmm. at the movies that are out where Satan is like this yeah. this all powerful being, yeah. and the priest is like this little cowering yeah. you know yeah. guy in the yeah. corner. Yeah. And the higher you go in Satanism, the more you come to learn that one, your master's a liar. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, your master doesn't care about you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and really, if if you died by the wayside, he wouldn't care. He'd just get somebody else to replace you. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and it's like also the higher you go, you realize at the first level you're thinking that eventually you're going to win. Satan is going to be this all-powerful, we're going to go against God. Mm. Um, he got thrown out of heaven the first time yeah. because he didn't have enough power. He didn't have enough forces with him. Uh-huh. And eventually, he's going to rally. He's going to uh-huh. get a bunch of forces. We're going to go back, and we're going to take over heaven. Wow. And it's going to be run the way we want it to. There's going to be sin and depravity up there, and, yeah. and God will be ousted, you know, just like Satan was ousted. Wow. However, once you get high enough up, you realize that you're going to hell. Hmm. He's going to hell, and you're all going to hell, and it's hmm. not a party place. Hmm. You know, it's not a, it's not a, 
you know, hey, we're going to be dancing and yeah. smoking dope all, all day. Yeah. No, you're going to be burning in hell. And, yeah. and that's what it is. Yeah. And, and at that point, you've been in it so long that it, it's very hard to say, oh, time to get out. Hmm. Well, now you've been in there for 10 or 12 years, and this hmm. is all you know. Hmm. You know, when I got started, when I was uh, 13 years old, um, they make you do 13 steps to, to becoming a Satanist. Okay. If you're an adult, you have 13 steps. If you're in a kid, you have 13 steps. Uh, the adult steps are a lot more complicated than, than okay. a child. Okay. As a child, they whittle away at your innocence. So you, you yeah. do 13 sins that just take your innocence here and there, but they seem like they're fun sins. Yeah. So you don't feel like you're losing your soul as much yeah. as what you really are. Right. Um, but the one of the last things I did is that I signed a parchment that said that um, I denounce Jesus, I denounce yeah. everything holy, yeah. um, I will... I would not go to God for a problem, even if I could. Hmm, okay. So, and that, you believe that follows you your entire life. And when you're 13 years old, sure. you're signing what you think is a legal binding right, document. Right, right. You know, you're 13, you don't know any better. Right. And you think that everything they're telling you is true. Right. You know, so I thought I'd really damn myself. I thought there was no chance of me ever being saved. And I, at that point, didn't want to be saved. Huh. You know, and, and, and all those things are false. I mean, it, right. you can be saved at any point. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. but, but you're not told that. And so I really believed that I was yeah. doomed. Yeah, yeah. That's a key point, that as long as you have a, a breath of life, as long as you can make that free conscious decision, Lord, I, I need you. You know, like the good thief on the cross, remember right. me. You know, the, 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 uh, Tax collector in the temple, the 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 publican, the who said, you know, have mercy on me, a sinner. You know that was a, sufficient. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. yeah, that's. Uh, it seems to me that's one of the Satan's great tactics is that he leads to despair. Um, you thinking that it's you know this was an irrevocable decision. I committed myself to, uh, to him, and, and there's nothing that can be done about it. And that's never the case. That there's always <laughs> as long as. Uh, as long as you can ask for help, it's there, you know. I mean, one of the one of the just despicable acts of Satan is that he will draw you close to him with sin, vice, you know, whatever your weakness is. He's going to know it, mm -hmm. and he's going to get you in it, and he's going to draw you in where you think you're happy, mm -hmm. and then eventually he kind of like pulls the carpet out from under you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you start to fall. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing there to grab onto. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then it's eventually uh, one of the roads that he lets you go down is the road of suicide. Yeah. yeah. And now you've killed yourself, and now look where you are. Yeah. yeah. You know, and and all when you were on your way there, you didn't realize that you could have called out to God at any time. Yeah. yeah. And the church, for those of you that know someone who's committed suicide, the church does continue to pray for one who has committed suicide. And, and with God, all things are possible, so we don't ever despair uh, that, yeah, we, the hope is that the person did, you know, at the last moment, realize the mistake and call, and, and call out to God for help. And it's, and it's offered that that help is freely given. So we don't, we don't despair. We continue to pray for one who died by suicide. But that's, yeah, that's one of Satan's great victories, though. The, you know, the that precious life that is not ours, that is a gift from God. To to throw that away, yeah, that's not that's not a good thing. <laughs> um, so all right. So then, um, maybe we were coming up on a break here in a couple minutes, but, um. <clears throat> Just, I'm still trying to wrap my brain around all this. Uh, what do you, I want to uh, touch a little bit on that? <clears throat> how you said how the devil kind of coaxes you in by uh, by seeming like your friend. I guess that's how Bishop Fulton Sheen put it. That before we sin, the devil seems like our friend. Go ahead, why not? Everybody's doing it. You deserve a little fun today. <clears throat> and God seems like our enemy restricting us thou shalt not you know but he says after the sin uh, the, the roles are reversed god then is seen as our only hope and satan becomes uh, as the scriptures refer to him as the accuser you know, saying things like you know how foolish you were i can't believe you think you can be saved now or, or whatever that right you know and so that 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 constant uh whatever it takes to lead to despair that's um you know as i said uh, salvation is freely offered to one who asks for it. But to me, it seems like his two tactics, the despair, 
thinking my sins are too great. God, Even God cannot forgive my sins. I'm not going to bother asking. On the one hand, and then it seems like there's the opposite extreme of um, not recognizing the sin, our, uh, our hard-heartedness that, what do I need God for? Every, you know, it's not, it's not that bad. <laughs> Everybody's doing it. That's not a sin. You know, we, we don't recognize the sin. So we do have to take a break. We're going to be right back. We're listening to, or we're here in the studio with uh, Zachary King. We'll be right back after this. Okay, and we are back with uh, Zachary King in the studio. You're listening to Here I Am, Lord. My name is Father Dan Hohen, and we're talking about the wiles of the enemy, the old Satan himself, the prince of darkness, the father of lies, the ancient serpent. <laughs> you know, the book of Revelation speaks of the ancient serpent uh, sweeping his tail and casting a third of the stars down to the earth. I think we can assume that a third of the angels are, are fallen, which means, <laughs> you think about it, how many, you know, today Today there's roughly 7 billion people on the face of the earth, just today alone. Each one has a guardian angel. I mean, we're talking billions and billions and billions of angels. A third of those became demons, <laughs> you know. Uh, in other words, there's a lot of, uh, uh, we, we have a, a formidable foe uh, that we're up against. <laughs> but if, if you think about that, that, you know, there's still two-thirds uh, that are good. Yeah. Right, and there's more in heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, and Satan is gonna, you know, yeah. lose bad. Yeah, we know that's the yeah that's the comforting thing that we know as Christians. The battle has been won. <laughs> Christ Himself has won the battle. So that's that gives us courage. You know, today's uh, first uh, reading uh, for for mass was from Paul. You know, if God is if God is for us, who can be against us? You know, why are we, <laughs> why do we panic? Like, oh no, God has forgotten me. I hear this all the time. You know, but when when life is going bad and God's forgotten me, you know, it's like God has not forgotten you, but he's he's permitting the test. He permitted you to go down this uh, wrong path and. Uh, uh, you know, I keep. I just can't help referring to Saint Paul. You know, the, it all worked for a much greater good. Remember what they said about Paul: the one who was formerly persecuting us is now preaching uh, the gospel. It's like we better go hear this guy. You know, it's like it was a. Uh, it it made the story all that more uh, convincing. I think with Saint Paul, and, and God can do that with our own lives, no matter how far down the wrong path we've gone, and and perhaps even because of that fact, when we get on the right road, and people will take notice. Well, wait a minute. He used to be <laughs> like this, and now all of a sudden it seems like something's quite different in his life. You know, what does he know that I don't know? What what does he have that I don't have? And so we're, we're grateful that you're willing to go around and share your story. So maybe can we just continue <laughs> with that? Um, so um, I know you, you mentioned then uh, you, uh, you were... It seems to me this was your, your first satanic ritual. I don't know if you would consider this a, a black mass. What exactly is a black mass or whatever? But you were, it was before you were 15. At the age of 14, was that a, like a, a formal initiation, or was that just another step along the way? You, we had talked about that before. Where, and I don't know how much you're, <laughs> you, you want to talk about it. And, um, but what is is there? Was there like along this? The, you know, you mentioned this. Like the pyramid, where at the lower level you think you're, right? Uh, you know, you think you're going to win the battle. Eventually, you realize that's not going to be the case. <laughs> but um, um, when you were, uh, what was your your first big initiation? Maybe is that, uh, that um, when you're? Well, I got started in the the Satanic Coven when I was twelve. Okay. And at that time, you're given uh, they have sleepovers, and you're, you're allowed to drink your your first beer. Okay. Uh, your first shot. Okay. Um, uh, you're introduced to things that no 12 year old should mm. should ever know. Mm. Uh, movies that you sh- shouldn't yeah. watch, and yeah. and you know, I'll let your your listeners use their imagination. Right. But right. you know, pretty much anything you can imagine, I was mm. doing. Mm. And uh, and you know, it, it was a lot. There was a different time then. You know, it's like now the kids have the internet; they can look up anything. Hmm. And we didn't have the internet back then. Yeah. You know, talking, I was twelve years old in nineteen seventy-eight. Yeah, yeah, we never would have dreamt of it. Yeah, right. So, so it, it was a different time, and you know, I, I, everything was like introduced to me as, oh, why don't you try this? Yeah. Oh, your parents aren't going to find out. Yeah. You know, and if they find out, you know, you're over with responsible adults. They would never let you do anything like that. 
you know, and so my my parents knew some of these people and didn't know there was anything wrong with them. I mean, some of these people went to my same church. Hmm. And um, so you know, that introduces you slowly, and then they just, you know, you see what it is that you can get out of doing this, hmm. and you want it. Hmm. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm a kid, I'm geeky, you know, I, I'm a comic book fan, you know, I collect hmm. comic books, hmm. I, you know... Um, you know, it's like I, I, I have like, you know, there are bullies in, you know, all through school. You know, there's, you know, bully, bullying is a, a big deal now. Well, bullying was just as big back then. Yeah. You know, and, sure. and uh, my, my parents put me in karate when I was eight years old because, you know, I was getting attacked by bullies, hmm. you know, because I was a geek and, hmm. you know, we're not popular in school. Yeah. Hmm. And, um, and so magic was a way for me to get power. Hmm. You know, it's like I'm finding out these magic spells really work. You know, and it's like, oh, you're really going to mess with me at lunch? Oh, well, I'm going to do this spell about you the day before. And look, you didn't show up to school today. Huh. And so that actually worked for you. It worked for me. And things like that reinforced that what I'm doing is the right thing. Hmm. You know, even hmm. though it was as wrong as I could get. I mean, right, right. Um, we just did a, uh, a CD called Would Harry Potter Make a Good Christian? Hmm. And in that, um, I listed all the scriptures in the bible where it says magic is bad yeah magic or divination or sorcery yeah, right right you know witchcraft yeah. um you know through saying all of that I mean, there's like 12 verses yeah from new testament and old testament yeah, yeah. you know the, the the old testament tells you that if you're into this stuff you're going to die like yeah. god will kill you yeah, yeah. and then, then the new testament tells you you won't inherit the kingdom of god right, right. so you're doomed either way you know yeah. it's like why would you think this is okay yeah 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 so, how when you would put a curse uh, is that the right terminology? Put a curse on someone or a spell? Yeah, I think you said a spell or whatever. How frequently would it work? Was it <laughs> uh, for myself? I was about ninety percent accurate. Ninety percent. Oh, no. I've, I've I've talked to people that say that's almost like a miracle hmm. that you know ninety percent is like a uh, an astronomical number. You mean other satanists? Other satanists. Yeah, okay. um, I've also okay. talked to satanists that were a hundred percent. Wow. Now I don't know if they're telling the truth. I yeah. mean it's not in our nature to tell the truth, <laughs> right? you know, so, you know, of course we want to build ourselves up to be better yeah. than what we are so yeah. that other people fear us. Yeah. Um, you know, it's all about power. Hmm. And, you know, even if I don't have more power than you, I'm going to tell you that I have more yeah. power than you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, something I read from the, the recently retired, the, the he, he's the, uh, was the chief exorcist of the diocese of Rome, Father Gabriel. Uh, yeah. 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 And he, well, one of my uh, the things that seemed perplexing to me is, well, how does God permit a someone to curse another person? You know, that doesn't seem fair. That you can, you know, your bully, you put a curse on him, and and he he's sick the next day or whatever. And his point, if I recall, I'm just kind of paraphrasing, but it was just kind of that in in the uh, in the natural order, in the in the visible order, maybe I should say, you know. We know that your evil intention can have an evil effect. I decide to <laughs> uh, pull out a gun and shoot somebody. God normally doesn't intervene and deflect the bullet. He'll allow my evil intention to have an evil effect. We can call on the angels and the saints to intercede on our behalf, to, to pray for us, to ask for the divine assistance to, uh, to benefit us. And and similarly, it seems his point is that we can also call on the assistance of, of the, the demons, the fallen angels, who then can intercede. Uh, part of this deal we enter into, you know, if, if you ever curse somebody, I curse, curse you. You know, you're entering into, it seems to me, a relationship uh, with, the, with, the, with the devil. You know, you're, you're asking for the, the, the demonic assistance to, to render, to work the evil. That you know, I guess his point is that it does make logical sense that if if I can call on the the, the good angels to uh, to to assist me to benefit to my you know for my good, similarly we can call on the the fallen angels to ask for their <laughs> uh, evil assistance. And that is that, true. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a scary thought. <laughs> well, to 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 make a uh, to make a spell, um, to to make one I guess real so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, you need intent. Okay. Uh, repetition okay and a demon present okay. so some people that do a uh, do a spell and they're like you know I've tried this spell 12 times and it's never worked um, but they had the intent they really wanted it and you know like somebody does a love spell 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what do you they, mean a love spell? Um, you know, they want, so want somebody you, to fall in love. Yeah, with Yeah, they want somebody to okay, fall in okay, love okay, with them. Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay. You know, and and it, you know, it could be any any level of you know, it could be somebody that there's no way a um, a model would fall in love with them. Okay. But if you had the right demon present when you did it, hmm. you you could get it. Hmm. Just remember that. No spell ever really goes exactly how you want it to go. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, there's something to you, you're paying for it. Mm. You know, whether it's a nick coming out of your soul or mm. uh, you're one step closer to hell now, you're one right. step closer to the devil. Right. Um, you know, there's no there's no innocent spell. Right. You know, all, you know, all there's no distinction between white and black magic. Yeah, there's it's no, all yeah. it's all evil. There's no good magic, right? Right. There's no right. good magic. Right. You know, it's like magic doesn't come from God. Right. You know, right. and it's right. like. Um, so you need, you need intent, repetition, and a demon. Pre- I imagine you probably need the repetition because, um, you need to have a demon present and you're not going to have one present every time. Hmm. Um, the majority of spells are only done once for it to work. It only takes one time for it to work, but you need all three things present. Hmm. Hmm. Now, as well in the, in the Harry Potter CD we did, you know, I've talked to, I, <laughs> hundreds of people that have said, I've tried these spells over and over and over again, and they never work. You know, so they don't think that spells the spells are real. from the Harry Potter? Spells, spells oh, okay. from the Harry Potter. Okay. Um, some of the Harry Potter spells are real, and some of them are not. Okay. However, think of how many times the movies are played, yeah. and how many people have seen them, and how many times the books have been read by how many people. Yeah. If you're just reading the book, and you're, you're reading through it, and you're reading a spell, no big deal. Mm-hmm. But if you're reading the spell and you want that spell to work and mm. you keep saying it over and over again, wow. you've got the intent and you've got yeah. the repetition. Yeah. How many times are you going to say it before a demon shows up? Wow. And now it's a real spell. Wow. Wow. That is scary. So the, so the, you know, the spells are, are actual. Did, uh, did, did the author consult? Uh, is there like a book of Satan or something? I mean, um, they're actual? She actually, she, uh, one third of all of her material came from researching the occult. My she admits this. Oh boy, oh boy! Uh, Warner Brothers, who put out the movies, said yeah. that the witchcraft in Harry Potter is an accurate representation of real witchcraft. Wow, wow, that's a scary thing. <laughs> wow. Okay, so I know we're uh, up against the break here, and uh, yeah, and uh, all right. There's so much, uh, so many questions I want to ask. I, as a priest, I get a lot of, uh, um, I get a lot of uh, questions. Of, all right, well, well, when we come back, I, I do want to. I do want to talk about some of that stuff, but a lot of stuff that comes up uh, that I experienced uh, just last night blessing a, a home because the drawers were opening by themselves and slamming, the, the lid on the washing machine opening and slamming, the light switches actually physically while being while somebody was watching could see the f- switches flip on and off, on and off, on and off, and a lot of things. So, okay, we do have to uh, take a break, though, so uh, we're going to... Be right back after this. You're listening to Here I Am, Lord, on World Family of Radio Maria. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back with Here I Am, Lord. We're in the studio with uh, Zachary King talking about Satan. Um, I think some people are probably surprised what you said about Harry Potter, that it contains uh, actual <laughs> curses and uh, actual satanic prayers. I heard, would you refer to it as a prayer? or I don't, I don't know. Uh, just um, <laughs> spells. Curse, spells, yeah. Spells, but I mean, yeah. you know, as I said in the... Um, in, in my CD, the, you know, I mentioned like 10 different or 12 different verses in the Bible where it condemns yeah. This, yeah. this type oh, of activity. Yeah. And it's like, why would you think that yeah. it's condemned in the Bible, yeah. but it's okay to do here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's interesting, the, kind of the proliferation today of, uh, of um, psychics, you know, people interested in, in uh, you know, knowing their... You know, something else that uh, J.K. Rowling's, um, she outed uh, Albus Dumbledore. So now she has a gay character that no one knew was gay until in you know, like the last book or the next to the last book, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and it's like um, so in my in my CD I I ask would Harry Potter make a good Christian yeah but I don't actually answer the question so to speak myself I let yeah. you draw the conclusion by listening to uh, the priests that I quote and the lay people that I quote and J.K. Rowling's herself and Emma Watson and um, you know people associated with the books or people that have read the books and this is their opinion. As well as we we have the Ten Commandments and the A Beatitudes in there, yeah. and we have uh, every verse that has to do with magic in the Bible, yeah. 
and every verse that has to do with homosexuality in the Bible. Yeah. You know, and, you know, and those are such hot topics right. today. Right. You know, and it's like, okay, this is what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. You know, and yet, you know, it's, it's the most sold book there is. It's the most popular movie there is. It's the, made the most money. And it's like, well, no wonder it's got Satan's hand in it. Yeah, yeah. He certainly is uh, working behind the scenes, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so, so you, if you're... Uh, if you're listening and you're thinking of uh, with getting uh, your nephew or your child or your grandkid uh, <laughs> a uh, Harry Potter uh, DVD or book, uh, you would strongly discourage that, uh, obviously, <laughs> and, uh, uh, Zachary, right? I mean, you're saying stay away from it. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying stay away from it as well. You know, I, I don't want this to sound like I'm, I'm plugging because I want you to buy my CD, but... You know, if you listen to the CD, you at least can make an informed decision at that point. How do you How do you get the CD? Do you have a? Um, a currently, uh, my website's not up yet. Okay. Um, if they either, I have a, a cell phone that's for the ministry. Mm -hmm. That's uh, eight zero two five seven eight six five five four, or um, you can email me at mysticforgod at yahoo dot com. Mystic for God. And what was the cell phone? The number again? 802? It's 802-578-6554. 6554. Okay. Mystic for God is the is the website. Hmm. All right. So uh, back to your story then. Now you wound up in, uh, I don't know if this is the right terminology, a very high-ranking member. And I think you kind of corrected me that there's not really, uh, there's not really, um, uh, is, what what was your position in the World Church of Satan? Actually, I was a I was a high wizard. A high wizard. What exactly is a high wizard? A high wizard is the highest magical entity person. Okay. Um, you there's two sides to Satanism. There's a a, a business side and a practical side. Okay. Um, I mean, you know, Satan has a lot of money. You know, and he has bankers that take care of it, and he has accountants that account for all of it. And mm -hmm. and uh, almost any job you could have on the outside, you know, in the real world, you could also do under the Church of Satan. Um, so, like, my actual job, I had two jobs. I broke up Baptist churches. I split them. Okay. And, and I also did magic. And I had done magic for so long and was, like I said, I was 90% accurate. That's pretty accurate. Yeah. So... I you progress through the ranks. Um, there's there's different levels as you you um, go up, and uh, pretty much all the all the rank titles have to do with uh, t types of gemstones or um, um, crystals and things like that. Um, but High Wizard is the top one, and it's actually given by Satan. Like the, there's there's a person within the Church of Satan that the the, the World Church of Satan that is demon possessed but they're believed to be possessed by satan himself oh, wow okay so that's interesting because not every diabolical case of possession is actually satan himself but usually lesser demons is that is usually that, yeah, usually that's the case and usually a number of them i think right but so, yeah that yes but yeah. satan himself can possess and and does yeah and as well as he has his own i mean uh, the hierarchy of angels that god has mm -hmm. satan has as well so there are um like archangels yeah, in, yeah. in satan's world as well yeah yeah interesting you mentioned you broke up baptist churches how did you go about breaking up <laughs> baptist churches <laughs> well you know because i was a member i grew up baptist uh -huh. you know so i was in baptist churches till um even up until probably i was 14 or 15 years old you know and and at a certain point um, and this this may not be the the case now because you know I mean this is I'm talking 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, but back then, every Sunday when I would sit down and and hear about God in the Baptist church, uh, they somehow managed to put into the sermon that um, they needed money. And it wasn't just the the <laughs> okay. offering. It was there was something. I mean, if the Bible verse was Jesus wept, it was Jesus wept because I'd he like didn't it. have enough money. <laughs> so. <laughs> if you're Baptist and you're hearing this, you know, I'm sorry. It's just, you know, what what, what I experienced. Okay. Um, so I got tired of hearing that. And one day um, I had told my dad, I said, I, I can't take it anymore. I don't want to hear this anymore. You know, I'm going to be at church today. And if they mention that other than the offering, I know that I'm walking home, that I don't want to hear it anymore. And 
my uh, and my dad was i understand he was quite upset because the, the it show it broadcast live on the radio okay and he heard it and my mother said oh your father got so upset because <laughs> that's he it. heard the message and he knew uh, he's coming home <laughs> oh, but but you know i had 14 years of experience in the baptist church you know mm-hmm. growing up and you you get to know every every little thing that they do mm-hmm. well one of the big things in the baptist church is, is committees okay like whatever committee you can join is I mean, you know, if you ask them what's the most important committee, they'll say they're all important. Hmm. But at the the Baptist churches that I grew up in, it was like um, carpet drapes and and choir robes. <laughs> if you could get on one of those, you you had made it in. You were you were in the in crowd. And um, if you could get into one of those and say, um, you were the the committee chairman, and your best and not your best friend, but a good friend was also you. It was like your your assistant. Okay. Um, but it was a runoff. It was like an election, and you won. Mm-hmm. And when I go to the meeting, I actually managed to make it onto the committee. I'm new, and you know, you guys kind of want to, oh, let's invite the new guy to join the committee and see how it goes. And I will be talking with both of you. I privately, I'll, you know, I'll go out to lunch with both of you, mm-hmm. and I will um, find out that there is some tension, there's some friction between you. Okay. I will play on that. You know, I will tell him something. Well, well I heard... Uh, Dan said this. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he's not going to go to you and say, "Yeah, hey, this new guy Zach said this." Yeah. Because I told him in confidence, he yeah. can't go to you. You know, he'll tell me something back, and I'll go to you, yeah. or I'll go to one of your friends and say, yeah. "And this guy said said this about Dan." I don't know. Yeah. You know, should I believe it or not? Right. If you do that enough to enough people, you can really start getting, um, you know, some dissension going. Mm-hmm. Now, as well, you want to play on whoever the preacher is. You want to go to the preacher and say, hey, you know, I'm, an, I'm new at this church, and I don't know if this is really the right thing to say or the right thing to do, but this is going on. Mm-hmm. Now, the thing about some, I'm not going to say all Baptist churches. They can't all be like this. Mm-hmm. But a lot of Baptist churches, there's a lot of egos involved, and mm-hmm. there's a lot of egos involved in these committees. Sure. You get on a committee, and it's like it's a big deal. Yeah. You know, these people think that this is really important to be on one of these. Wow. wow. And um, and what ends up happening is if you can split a committee, you can split a church. Wow. That's that's evil. <laughs> so we're going to we're going to have to take a break here uh, for station identification. And then we're going to come back. We'll take a little pause. You're uh, listening to Here I Am, Lord. We're talking with uh, a former high wizard of the World Church of Satan, Zachary King. And uh, we'll get uh, we'll talk about his miraculous conversion Uh, Eventually, we'll get to that, but hope you stick with us. Uh, We're listening to World Family of Radio Maria. We'll be back after this. You're listening to AM 1240 WSBC Chicago, World Family Radio Maria. The following program is Here I Am, Lord, with your host, Father Dan Hohen. Okay, we are back. Thank you, uh, Chris, our producer today. We appreciate, um, appreciate that you are all with us today as well. And uh, we're in the studio with uh, Zachary King about the uh, with his experience with the World Church of Satan. Um, we were just talking about the uh, one of the tactics, one of your responsibilities in the World Church of Satan was was breaking up various churches. So you went around to the Baptist churches, spreading basically just uh, just gossip is what it sounds like. Uh, you know, uh, it was um, just um, gossip, dissension. Um, backstabbing, mm-hmm. and you know what? What you, you count on things like that when you say something in confidence, they're not going to go to somebody else and mm-hmm. and verify the story. I, I mean that that happens all the time. Yeah, you know, eventually they may talk to one another and go, "Wait a minute, it's not it." You know, this isn't exactly what I said, and yeah. Zach put that out, took that out of context. Oh, okay. You know, and things like that. But when you get the the preacher involved, you know, because the preacher will actually go and talk to these people and verify that. And you want to make sure that when you talk to the preacher, you know, when I was talking to the preacher, I was telling him the absolute truth. Mm. Wow. You know, it's like this person did tell me exactly what I'm telling him. Yeah. So that when he goes and verifies, well, I'm still the good guy. Yeah. yeah. Because I told him the truth on all these people. Wow. You know, and and now he's got all these problems. Yeah. You know, I've included him in, in the mess. Yeah. And... um. And usually at the end of all this, I still end up looking like the good guy. Wow. If I'm not in church anymore, well, you know, I was new. Yeah. And I saw all this stuff that happened, and no wonder I left. Yeah. You know, it's like <laughs> all this dissension and all this, you know, stuff is going on, and the church splits. And 
half the church is now belonging to another another yeah. they may not have even stayed Baptist, you know, they yeah, yeah. you know, went to another church. Wow, and would you be members of multiple churches at once? Or? I I have been. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So that uh to me emphasizes how dangerous just gossip can be, you know, you know, did you hear what so and so said, you know, even right. you know, even if your intention is not to split a church or a household or a, or a marriage, I mean, yeah, how how what a what a ingenious tool of the, of the devil that is. <laughs> well, you know, it's not like he's new. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's been around for he's a while been. and he's been doing this for a while and you know, he's honed his skills. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like if if you're planning on, you know, never try and, and match wits with this guy. I mean, he mm. was an archangel, you know, he was he's very intelligent. Yeah. You know, it's like you're not going to fool him. Right. You know, yeah. don't think that I I'm going to do a deal with the devil. I'm going to step out at the last minute. No, you're not. Yeah. And you're going to step out if you've got the grace of God with you. Yeah. But if you're going into it with, you know, oh, I'm, I want to do a deal for riches, and when I get three million dollars, I'll stop worshiping yeah. Satan. Yeah, it's like, mm, no, yeah, yeah, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, it's interesting what our Lord said that uh, about the narrow gate that many will try to enter but will not be strong enough. That's an interesting uh, uh, detail in that in the gospel that there's a certain amount of strength that's necessary to enter through the narrow gate that. It seems to me when you've, like you said, you've you've all right, you've you set a goal. When I get three million dollars, I'll step out. But you've become so addicted by that point, you know, to the power, to the money, whatever, that it's yeah, you know, name a millionaire who's not trying to make another million, you know. Right. It's, uh, you know, it's Howard Hughes, I think, was asked. You know, what, you know, of course, he's been dead for a while, but you know, back when he was alive, they asked him how much money is enough money, and he said just a little bit more. <laughs> you know, at one point, he was the richest man in the world. Yeah. Yeah. That's sad, and that's what Satan uh, preys on because, you know, we're all created with an infinite desire. If you think about it, God created us to be with him, and that is an infinite desire, you, you could say, that we have within us, that we, whatever we seek to fill that void with the, in this life is not going to be enough. You're never going to have enough <laughs> enough power, enough money. There's always, yeah, that was uh, that was uh, <laughs> interesting from Howard Hughes that, a little bit more. That's uh, that's what Satan wants too. A little bit more of our freedom. A little bit more of our commitment <laughs> to him. Or you know, well, you know his, his um, he has two basic goals. Hmm. One is to hurt God, and one is to have people worship him. But more importantly than people worshiping him is people not worshiping God. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. It sounds like uh, what C.S. Lewis had said that um, in his, I don't know if you ever read the screw tape letters, a very interesting uh, from C.S. Lewis, kind of a conversation between a senior devil and a junior devil about their uh, patient, you know, the one that they were tempting. And so the, the senior devil giving the advice to his nephew about how to tempt. And he says uh, something to the effect that, you know, don't, don't worry about tempting him to murder. You're never going to, don't, don't waste your time doing that. The sports section of the of the Sunday paper is sufficient if it keeps him away out of church, if it keeps him away mm -hmm. from God. If you can distract him from thinking about God, the murder is no better than the sports section. Is something to that effect or whatever. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's well, you know the the uh, the comic section has the horoscopes in it. Interesting. I never. Yeah, that... the, the the you know it's like you got the comics, the the crossword puzzle, and horoscope. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I never thought of that. Huh. And that's, as you said, in the in the scriptures over and over again, you know, have nothing to do with soothsayers, fortune tellers, astrologers. Right. That, uh, but, you know, Satan has convinced so many people that um, these these things are innocent. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, come on. You know, it's, like, it's not like you're going out and buying a book on horoscopes. You're just looking it up in the paper. Yeah. These things are computer generated. It's not a real person sitting there doing it. Mm. It's okay to do that. Mm. It's okay to go see Harry Potter. It's okay to go see horror movies. It's okay to watch uh, ghost hunters on TV or haunted houses, mm. you know. And then um, Satan took it, you know, another step and was like, well, you know, I'm not even real. Yeah. You know, yeah. think about all the people that don't believe the devil's real. They yeah. don't believe hell exists. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, does it say it in the Bible? Yeah. Oh, look, it does. Yeah. Over oh, and should, over. should I believe it? Yeah. Oh, I guess yeah. if the Bible says it. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. I, uh, there's a, I have a, a movie that I really like, The Usual Suspects. 
Hmm. And in it, there's a character named Verbal Kent, uh, played by Kevin Spacey. And he says, you know, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Hmm. And it's a very true quote. Yeah. I mean, think about all the people that don't believe the devil's real. Yeah. And how how far is it removed that if you if you take one thing out of the Bible and say, well, the devil's not real, how far is yeah. it to go, okay, maybe God's not real. Yeah, what else is not and real? Maybe, maybe the Blessed Mother didn't really exist. Maybe Jesus wasn't real. Heaven's mm -hmm. not real. Hell's not real. Right. Why do we even have the Bible? Why yeah. do we go to priests? Why do yeah. we go to confession? Yeah. What's up with the Eucharist? You know, it's like it, doubting one thing puts doubt in all of it. Right, right, yeah. The the tactic of getting people to think the devil doesn't exist. Uh, one of the things that I always that irritates me is the, is the number of schools, grade schools, high schools who have a demon as their mascot. You know, and, and next, right. to, next to my church we have the blue demons is the sports team, and, and all the kids have a, a have a picture of a demon on their jackets, on their uh, you know the, the the stuff that goes home with them. There, the, you know, everything is reduced to a cartoon character, like right, and and. And that's another thing Satan likes to do is make make his stuff look innocent. Yeah, yeah. You know, sugarcoat it a little bit. You know, it's like, what kind of person are you that you believe in, in um, like, Illuminati activity? Obviously, those are just conspiracy theory nut jobs out there that are making stuff up, and that stuff's not real. Um, you know, Harry Potter is made to look like it's all innocent, and it's just a children's movie, you know, and yet... It, it has magic and it has it's different magic than you know people compare it to uh the narnia series or um uh, i can't think of the other movie um the, the, lord of the rings oh, lord of the rings yeah you know yeah. and it's like if you try and duplicate the lord of the rings magic you can't it's just imagination mm -hmm. you know it's like he, he waves a, a white wand, you know white yeah. staff around and yeah. and and the nazgul are, are driven yeah. away mm -hmm. you know it's like but there's no spell for that mm -hmm. you know um, Harry Potter, you can actually, anything that he mentions, you can go online and find it. Wow. You can research it. You know, he mentions uh, talking to dead spirits or, hmm. or conjuring up, um, um, making something levitate, which is a, a satanic thing. Levitation is, is generally satanic. Um, hmm. Not always. Yeah. Uh, you know, but, but um, you know, that's a way that Satanists show their power is being able to, to levitate, which hmm. is not a special power of the, the magician. You know, I was able to levitate. There was no power that I had. I had a demon lift me up. Wow. I couldn't see the demon. I thought it was me. Wow. You know, see, this is the thing. This is the deception. This is how the devil gets you, is that he shows you the great power that you have, and mm. you don't have the power. Yeah, he makes you think it's he yours. He makes you think it's yours. You know, and it's like it, you're addicted. If you're, like, I was addicted to the power. Yeah. I wanted... I wanted the world to see that Zach was great. Yeah. And wow. Zach can do anything. Zach's wow. got the magic. Zach's got the money. Zach's yeah. got the women. You know, yeah. Zach's got whatever. Yeah. You know, and Zach didn't have anything. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was like hollow. I was empty. And yeah. I wasn't happy. You know, and it's like things you don't realize. Like, you know, now that I'm Catholic, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I've got Jesus. You know, I ingest the Eucharist every day. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, to be able to do that, that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was like the the one of the first times I went to a Catholic church. I um, and this was after my conversion. I guess we should eventually yeah. go back. Yeah, to the we will get. Yeah, we will get to the conversion. But, yeah, yeah. But um, yes. I found out that there was this thing called a monstrance, and I was like, "Well, what's that?" And uh, and they show me what a monstrance is, and then they tell me that there's a place called adoration, mm -hmm. uh, Eucharistic adoration, and and mm -hmm. there's a place called perpetual Eucharistic adoration where you can go for 24 hours a day. And I'm like, so what actually is that? What what happens there? And they're like describing to me that, you know, it's like, I believe that Jesus is in the Eucharist. It's mm -hmm. That's what I see. And they're like, you can go there any time and you can talk to Jesus. You can see Jesus and, you know, whatever. And I'm like, you're kidding me. Uh -huh. I, I didn't know any of this. Yeah, and some so, of our listeners may not be familiar with the terminology. So the monstrance, it's uh, from from the Latin word where, where we get the word demonstrate, to, to, to display, kind of. It's the So once the, at the words of consecration, uh, according to our Lord, we, the, the, this, my, this, my, <laughs> this is my body, this is my blood, that what looks like bread and wine becomes the body and blood of Christ. So we, in the celebration of the Mass, the... The Eucharistic elements, the Blessed Sacrament that that remains, that the, the his it still remains <laughs> the body and blood of Christ. That doesn't change. The so the the monstrance is a a, a beautiful vessel to display to put on display a consecrated host. So the, the the Jesus really and truly present body, blood, soul, and divinity 
in what appears to be ordinary bread, but is we know at his words that the power by the power of the Holy Spirit becomes his uh, becomes the body of Christ. And so, all right. So then adoration. Then because of that, because of the uh, what the church has always taught, it makes sense then to spend time with our Lord in the in you know in his Eucharistic presence. You know, you think about the awesome. Uh, you can be kneeling there just, you know, a few feet from, you know, if you really realize what, what this is. This is God himself. He is here in my presence. Uh, I'm in his presence. Um, so, all right, so that's what I know. All right, so just to clarify that. So you, that was... So, a- so the, the amazing thing to me was the first time I went to this, because I was, I was so excited and I was hoping, you know, they said the room had like, 20 chairs in it and and i'm thinking 20 chairs you know i, I hope that you know, i'm thinking standing room only mm. there'll be a line to get in yeah no line to get in one person in the room it's the middle of the afternoon yeah. and i'm just in awe that there's one other person in this town that wants to see jesus at the same time as me wow you know i would think that the room would be full would be full and that it would take forever to get in and I was in there for probably a couple of hours the first time, mm-hmm. and it feels so holy to be in there. Yeah, it's yeah, Jesus yeah. is clearly right yeah, there in front yeah, of you, yeah, a, and yeah. incredible to me that I ended up going. I got on the the list to go um, two nights a week at three a.m. Okay, for those for those of you that don't know, three a.m. Yeah, uh, some people within the sound of my voice, I'm sure, get woken up every morning at three a.m. and yeah. you wonder. You might have happened for years. Yeah. Why is that happening to me? Yeah. You're either being woken up by a demon, and you need to pray. The um, it's it's the devil's hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've probably heard of the witching hour. That's midnight. The devil's hour is three a.m. Um, if you're being woken up and you've got a spooky feeling about you, you've got there's a dark presence in the room. You're feeling a heavy pressure on your chest. You need to get up and pray. Mm-hmm. If there's none of that, but you still feel you've got you've woken up for some reason, I feel that's like the Blessed Mother or the Holy Spirit or God telling you to mm-hmm. wake up, and as well pray yeah. and if you don't know what to pray pray a rosary or um pray the divine mercy prayer yeah 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 at 3 a.m being the reverse uh, i often think of satan as um as a photographic negative everything what's black is white what's white is black so three o'clock being the 3 p.m being the hour that our lord died on the cross and uh so 3 a.m you know that becomes the devil's hour uh speaking of hour the time is ticking we have to we have to take a break we are definitely going to get to your conversion i hope you don't leave the studio unconverted here today so we have to get to that (laughs) so all right we're going to be back in just a minute here you're listening to uh, here i am lord we'll be back after this I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard... <laughs> oh, it's good to, that you were with us. I'm tickled to think that you are here listening to um, the, the incredible conversion story of Zachary King uh, from the World Church of Satan. And we were talking about uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, tactics of the devil is... Uh, uh, we were talking about getting awakened in the in the middle of the night at at three a.m. That being a very significant hour. I just kind of threw that out. I think that's the, the, the I assume that's the reasoning. I don't know if that's specifically because of the, the traditionally the the what we believe the hour that our Lord died on the cross. Well, I mean it, it, the scriptures tell us at, at three that um, I'm assuming you know the devil likes to do the opposite. And is that, uh, yeah, it's it's. Um Things that Satan does is uh, is to mock God. Uh, so um, things that happen, like you know, uh, we we attend the Catholic Mass. Mm-hmm. Uh, Satan does the Black Mass. Uh, we recite the Lord's Prayer. If you're a Satanist, you recite it backwards. Um, Re- really, word for word, just backwards. Yeah, just backwards. Interesting. I did not know that. Uh, rosaries as well. They'll try and do the rosary mm-hmm. backwards. Um, um, a Satan, a satanic rosary has uh, an upside down and inverted cross on it, or inverted crucifix on it, which is a uh, symbol for human sacrifice. Um, mm. You know, they'll they'll, they'll do that. It, uh, the beads on it usually are black. Mm-hmm. And there's actual there's websites. Uh, I, 
I don't want to promote any of them. But, right. Yeah. But there are websites where you can go that have satanic stuff right. that you can buy. I mean, if right. you want to do your own black mass, there's a right. satanic altar, satanic um, rosaries, satanic, anything that you would use in a regular mass, yeah. there's a satanic version of it. Wow. Wow. You know what? I was looking online once to just to, on the eBay to see about getting a used chalice. You know, it was... I was just seeing, you know, because I knew a priest who bought a chalice. I thought, oh, let's see what's what's available. There were a lot of, I'm assuming they were satanic because they were they were nothing that I had ever seen in a church, but they were they they were under you know the listed under chalices, but they were. You can see things that have like demons or demons eyes or claws or yeah. um, dragons or yeah. dragons tails yeah. or yeah. Yeah. all kind of stuff. Some of the stuff is um, just like hokey stuff you'd buy at Spencer's. Yeah. And then some of the stuff is real um, magical yeah. stuff. I mean, you'll yeah. see stuff with pentagrams or inverted pentagrams, mm -hmm. um, upside down crosses as well, yeah. you know, and uh, just all kind of stuff that um, is offensive. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned the upside down cross. I, uh, I know you talked about the peace sign where we, you know, that became very popular in the late 60s and 70s. I think the well, that that happened in my um, when I first first uh, was introduced to the peace sign was when I was getting introduced to Satanism. It was it was the you know, within the final steps of becoming a Satanist of becoming a member when I was thirteen years old. They hand you a a circle made of metal that has a a, a, a crucifix in it, mm -hmm. and you spin the crucifix upside down, and once you denounce Jesus, you break the arms. Mm. Well, once you've broken the arms and you've got an upside down cross, that's a crucifix. So that's, that's a that's the peace a sign. that's the peace, peace sign. sign. Yeah. yeah, and and it's like I didn't even realize it until yeah. I made it, and I was yeah. like, "Oh, that looks well, kind of familiar." Oh, wow! <laughs> see, oh, well, interesting. And you see, I saw this in church last Sunday. A kid had a T-shirt with a peace sign on it. You know that you, you see it all the time still. Right, it's everywhere. <clears throat> hmm. I wonder what the danger is then if someone doesn't know. You think it's dangerous if you're just an in a kid innocently wearing a shirt that grandma bought her, and you know you don't know what it is. Uh, I don't know if there's danger there. It's I don't know. Do you think there would be danger if somebody gave you a necklace? Let's say you weren't you weren't Catholic, you didn't know, and somebody gave you a necklace with um, inverted pentagram, which is satanic, <laughs> yeah, and you put it on. Is yeah, there a danger yeah, to that? Yeah, it, it would seem like there would be. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's not a good thing. You know the 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 devil the devil horn sign. You know the the praise hail Satan, mm -hmm. which you know your listeners of course can't see, but you know it's that. Okay. And <laughs> so it should I describe it or should we not um, even? Well, whatever. <laughs> well, you know, I'm sure they. I'm sure everybody knows okay. it. I mean, okay. you, you see it at like every rock concert okay. you've ever been to, even okay. at Christian rock concerts, you okay. see it. Okay. Um, but it's also done like, you know, um, ex President Bush belong to whatever college you belong to texas longhorns or whatever they do the same symbol okay you know and it's like okay so and he does it as a as a sign of solidarity to other people that belong to the same college they do the sign of the horns to each other okay. you know it's like okay so is that dangerous yeah, yeah. i i don't know because yeah. satan uses the same symbol right and right. satan as well could go to god and go look there's 75,000 people down in that stadium making the sign of the horns that's my sign yeah. You know, and it's like there'd be people that would say, no, 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 it's the sign of the school. It's like, okay, who was here first? Mm. You know, was the school here first yeah. to show us this symbol? Yeah. Or was Satan here first to show us the symbol? Yeah, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about, um, I was just thinking when we were talking about the peace sign, the like objects that, uh, I guess, you know, I was mentioning like the chalices, something you buy on eBay or something. Can you buy an object that has a curse on it? Was that something that you would do? Oh, you, you could, you could absolutely. If I you mean, bought anything that's been used in a magic ritual, it, it's it's cursed. Yeah, and I don't mean just buy. If if you have something, you you picked up at a garage sale, somebody gave you something. Sometimes, you know, and I know Father Amorth mentions this in the book that there can be there's uh, right there's objects that you have to get rid of and. And you know he's, he's he says you burn them and then you sprinkle the ashes in a in a flowing water a river to get rid of the ashes even you don't even in other words you don't even want the ashes around but um, was that something that you had ever uh, you know to, in, as a way to infiltrate you know you you sneak an object into somebody's home that's been cursed or something is that, uh, that that's a that's a common that's a common activity mm -hmm. um, you know we've sent gift boxes mm -hmm. to preachers. You know, that'll get something and, you know, like, I don't know who this is from, but they sent me a gift box 
I didn't really like anything in it, but I really like this object. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everything's cursed in it. Hmm. And now everything's falling apart in this man's life, and he doesn't know why. Hmm. You know, and it's because he received a gift box, basically, from Satan. So it's more powerful if he receives it by an act of the will that he accepts it, or does yeah, it's 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 more powerful if you if you use your free will to say yes, I'll take it, hmm. than if I walk through your house and it's throw a, a cursed yeah. metal of some kind yeah. behind something. Yeah, yeah, that you don't know is there, huh? But e- but even that could have an effect. The, the curse yeah, that that could have an effect as well. But it's it's more powerful if you used your free will to accept like it. To accept it, is can something become uncursed if if somebody puts a curse on somebody? Is there something? Is there? How well, do you? Well, you as a priest. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you as a priest could remove the curse. Do um, you have to know like what's cursed though? In the I mean, do you have to know which object in the house is cursed? Well, you? I would think that if you went through the house and yeah. and blessed the house. Right. Right. That right. should eliminate every every curse that's in the house. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I still, if I was living in the house, I wouldn't keep like if I had crystals in the house. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't keep them. Right. Even after you've blessed them, I still wouldn't right. keep them. Right. Right. You know, I wouldn't keep anything that was satanic when I bought it. Yeah. You know, yeah. because how much will it take to get that cursed again? Yeah. I would think it would take less than mm. than any other object in the house because it's already had a curse on it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I know they say like drug dealers will. I'm assuming they they get a, a wizard or a, somebody from the Church of Satan to to put a curse on the drugs so it's so right. it has to work maximum evil or right. That happens a lot in uh, South American countries. Um, yeah. You know, when they're they're shipping their cocaine or their marijuana up here to our country, uh, they put um, they do a curse so that people will become addicted to it and and want more of it. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that is evil. Scary stuff. <laughs> uh, luckily, God is merciful, and he leads us to conversion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, um, so you wound up very, uh, as a high wizard with a lot of power, you used to travel with bodyguards. I know you had told me something. Right. But yes. I mean, this was a, how, how so, uh, you were fairly sought after to... Um, yeah, be, well, like I said before, there's there's a business side and a practical side. Being a high wizard, you flip back and forth between both sides. Uh-huh. Um, you're privy to the the inner workings of the government, uh, the inner workings to, to how things are really run. You don't mean the governance of the Church of Satan. You're talking about no, the government the, of the, the government United, of the United, United States. States okay, right. All right. Okay. Um, you know, I've met many world leaders... Okay. Um, I've, I've, uh, and, and as well, if you wanted to talk to me, mm-hmm. you had to make an appointment with me and you couldn't just walk up and chat. I mean, it's, it's a good way to get shot. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's very scary, <laughs> but that's, so, all right, you had to line up an audience. And so li- yeah. And, and I've been to many, many events where like the Illuminati, you, well, know, you, you mentioned that. I don't think it does. Do people know what the Illuminati, uh, I, I, I would think that. Part of the world knows the Illuminati as the secret society that may or may not be real. Uh-huh. Some of the world thinks that it's just something that somebody has made up, and you see it in some movies. You know, if you read a Dan book, Brown book, you'll read it. Yeah. Yeah. And then there are those of us that know that these meanings are real, the people are real, okay. um, you know, uh, the activities are real. Uh, there's a place called Bohemian Grove. Okay. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's an all-male uh, ritual, generally... Um, and um, again, California, uh, right? Right, yeah. and and a lot of um, a lot of dignitaries from around the world, you know, go to these places. Um, I could go uh, at the time when I was a high wizard. I didn't have to be invited. I would just go. I have like an open invitation to go. Okay. I'm not the only high wizard in the world. There okay. could be up to ten of us okay. on, in the world. Okay. Um, and we would go to all these events, mm-hmm. and you get to see, um, you get to see people that are current or former presidents. Uh, you see future presidents. You see people walk past you and they say, that guy's going to be president one day. Mm. And you really don't care. You know, it's like, tell me whatever you want. Um, I'm there for a job. Yeah. You know, it's like, I have spell work to do. Somebody needs me to do something for them. Okay. Wow. Wow. Interesting. That is scary. So that, uh, and everybody at this Bo- uh, Bohemian Grove, uh, they know. I mean, it's not like this is a secret that they think this is just a, some kind of a spiritual retreat or something. They they're, they're pretty much. It's kind of like a boys' club. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So okay. Uh, 
we're going to have to <laughs> take a break here and, and come right back. So uh, we will get to the conversion. <laughs> I hope you're hanging on. He will be converted, I promise you. So uh, you're listening to uh, Here I Am, Lord, on the World Family of Radio Maria. We're in the studio with Zachary King, and we'll be back right after this. Okay, I think we're back. <laughs> I hope you're back. I hope you're sticking around. And we are listening to uh, the story of Zachary King. Uh, Zachary uh, has a very fascinating story to tell about his involvement with the World Church of Satan. And um, so we do want to get to this. We keep promising his conversion. Uh, one of the one of the things that really struck me and has stuck with me, Zachary, was your at the age of 14, your involvement with um, your first, was this your first black mass? And, and, and for people who don't know <laughs> what that is, can, can you tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, your, uh, about your first? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't exactly a black mass. It, it was a, um, uh, black masses are generally done um, at the, um, like at the same time that a regular mass would be done. Oh, really? So, Good. like, yeah. So, like, if you're used to going to mass at eight a.m., then there'd be a black mass. Oh, actually. I always assumed they'd be like three in the morning or something. Uh, three in the morning is is the devil's hour, okay. and that's when, let's say you've got uh, you've got a problem. You're a Satanist, and you've got a problem that you need taken care of, but it's it's a uh, especially troublesome to you. Um, like my my first. Um, spell work that that happened on this particular spell. It was three months before I turned fifteen, mm-hmm. and there was a a member of of our our coven that was uh, he was a political figure of some kind. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm fourteen years old. I don't know, you know, one political figure from the other, and, and I really don't care. Right. So I don't really remember who he was, but he wanted to make sure that he won. His his election or his whatever it is he was going for the election or election his, yeah, yeah whatever, whatever it, it is okay. that he wanted he wanted to make sure he got it okay so there's a particular um, spell that's done and it's done at the three a.m. hour um, at my spell there's approximately fifty women they're nude they're uh, sitting on the floor and they're chanting um, our bodies ourselves and hmm. they've been chanting for probably two or three hours huh. there's a woman laying on a table. Um, in a, uh, a a doctor's table. I mean, it's got like you know, exam her, table. yeah, exam table. The stirrups. Her, her one, her feet are up in the stirrups. Now, the back the back story to this story is that nine months prior, um, myself at you know just turning fourteen, basically, um, possibly still thirteen years old, um, I had sexual intercourse with this woman along with um, ten other or twelve other boys about my same age. Mm. And she's an adult. Yeah. And so we all have this orgy, I guess, yeah. with her. Mm-hmm. And the purpose of the orgy was for her to get pregnant. Mm-hmm. And she knows that. She's a willing participant in this. Okay. And she knows that in nine months, when it's time for her to give birth, or about that time, we're going to abort this baby. Wow. And and that, that's what this whole setup is for. Yeah. Um, abortion. I have two books coming out. One is called Abortion is a Satanic Sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Uh, The other book is called uh, Satan Satan Loves Me, He Loves Me Not. Um, This story is actually the first story that appears in Satan Loves Me, He Loves Me Not. Mm -hmm. Um, And for those of you that missed the name of the other book, it is Satanic, you know, Abortion is a Satanic Sacrifice. Um, When we, we, you know, fast forward back to to this event, um, the, the, Magic spells that happen at 3 a.m. are the worst ones. They're mm. the most powerful ones. They're the the ones that, you know, it's like, you know, you're, you're trying to do something and you're you're wanting, whatever it is you're wanting is, it's, it, it takes a lot mm. to get it. It takes a lot for Satan to pay attention to you. Mm. And unfortunately, it works that way. And the worst thing you can do is abort a baby. Yeah. And yeah. that is like the most heinous crime that there is. Yeah, who more innocent than a, who more innocent yeah. than a child? Yeah. And so we're at we're we're at this event. The we have the the fifty women chanting. Um, 
Our bodies, ourselves. Our bodies, ourselves. They started at midnight, which is the witching hour. Um, they stop at 3 a.m., which is the devil's hour. Mm. There's a group of 13 of the high-ranking people in the room of the coven that have surrounded. They're in a semicircle around this woman that's laying on the table in the stirrups. I'm, like I said, 14 years old. I'm standing next to a doctor, and I've practiced this already with a scalpel and like a gourd, Mm -hmm. and I've been told what to do and and how to stay um, in the center of where I am because if you go off to the side, um, you could end up hurting the woman, and you don't want to... You don't want to damage the woman. All you're yeah. you're really doing is um, killing the baby. Yeah, yeah. And um, so at at a at a given point, I'm handed um, a longer than normal scalpel. Okay. And I insert this into this woman, and I feel the baby is actually in the birth canal. Yeah. And I I have to um, I have to stab yeah. repeatedly. Um, and into the the woman, and uh, and then after I've done a little bit, and you know I'm 14 years old. I've been a Satanist now for like a year and a half, and I'm yeah. totally into what I'm doing. Yeah, you know I I was it was explained to me that you know in the past they had yes indeed they had they had uh, sacrificed live people, and you know it's like you do this so many times people catch on and you end up getting arrested and going to jail, yeah. but um, aborting is legal. Yeah, that's legal. Yep. And it's yeah. like you can, you can, you, not only that, you can uh, now, you know, they have the late term abortions where yeah. the baby could be born and you can yeah. still, yeah, and see. you can still deny yeah. care to it and, and let it die. Yeah. You know, and that's just like the most horrific thing ever. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but at that time, you know, it was like, hey, you know, you can kill as much as you want. Hmm. You know, it's like we can do these abortion things every yeah. day if you yeah. want. Yeah. You, know, what, well, you know, no one's going to say anything. Yeah. So, I I don't know how many times I stabbed, but I stabbed the amount of times they wanted me to. And then the doctor took over and completed mm-hmm. um, the task. And then when um, when he was done, he used forceps that were kind of like sharpened. And he reached in and he tore the baby, like the limbs apart. Mm-hmm. And he threw this to the women on the floor and they devoured it. They ate it. Mm-hmm. Wow. And um, and you know this this is like this is one this is one of many horrific stories that I have. Yeah. Yeah. You know this is like definitely the worst one I'm going to tell you today. Yeah, yeah. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah, that's just unbelievable. There's uh, I'm imagining people, some people don't even can't even wrap their mind around that. But think about the logic here from Satan's standpoint. The one who who hates God, the inversion of good. So you take an innocent. Uh, sacrifice, uh, and they consume the body and blood of the immolated, the sacrificed victim, um, saying, my, our bodies, ourselves, the inversion of what Christ did. This is my body, which is given up for you. I'm doing right. this for you. We consume the body and blood of Christ at every, uh, at, at every uh, <laughs> Eucharistic sacrifice. And and uh, that the the evil, like you say, that it's it's mind-boggling that the the most evil thing you can imagine that is not only legal but it's really promoted. I mean, it is. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, that is scary. That is that is uh, that is wicked. <laughs> oh, and so you were involved in a number of those for you. I think you had said forty or fifty, maybe or yeah, forty or fifty that you had personally done, and then. Um, hundreds of others that you participated in, I think. Right. Yeah. And were they usually for the benefit of a, you mentioned that first one was for a local politician that had requested that sacrifice to win election. Was um, it? Yeah, everything was, um, well, there were, were politicians, there were people that were going for money, but they were going for like a lot of money or they were going for um, whatever their um project was that was with the state or the county or the government of some kind so that it would pass yeah okay. things that would be so absurd like who would possibly vote for this yeah and yet and yet passes it, it passes you know you yeah. do one of these spells yeah. and it passes that's yeah the, the 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 schemes of of the devil behind the scenes are making all this stuff happen that is right. that is evil 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 oh that is scary <laughs> 
Uh, I know we're going to have to take a break in about three minutes here, but we do have to <laughs> get to your conversion story. Uh, I want to say hello a minute to Father Steve Bauer. Steve uh, popped it by the studio here. Steve's uh, um, he's the he's over at the University of Illinois in Chicago. Did Correct. I say that right? Yes, you did. <laughs> Hi, Father Dan. Hi, Father Steve. Thanks for joining us. Um, and we're going to take a break. I don't know if you have any questions for for Zachary King. So we're talking about the the World Church of Satan. We do have to before we run out of time. We're going to get into his miraculous conversion story. So we will we will get to that definitely. We are eager to hear that. Yeah, I hope yeah. <laughs> I hope we get to it right away as soon as we come back. But um, I don't know if you uh, if you uh, as a priest we often encounter stuff, so we always wind up with a lot of questions. And uh, I don't know when we come back, maybe if you have any question, you can uh, you can ask that, or if you have anything right now or whatever, we'll we'll um, we'll, we'll get to it when we come back. So we've we've got a uh, we're gonna have to take a break, but. Your conversion, which began with the miraculous medal, I hope you stay tuned to this because if you don't think uh, there's power in in in, uh, in the uh, sacramentals of the church, our, our Lord grants us sacraments and sacramentals, and, and there is power in those things. And so the the power of the the miraculous medal was instrumental in your conversion. So we're gonna we're gonna hear that story. So stay tuned, uh, stay with us, and we're going to be back after this. You're listening to Here I Am, Lord. We're in the studio with Zachary King, and we'll be back right after this. Okay, we're running out of time. We're going to get right to Zachary's conversion story. I do want to just to let you know that he's going to be speaking on uh, the this Saturday. at uh, the, the You can go on a website. It's comeholyspiritconferences.org. Again, it's comeholyspiritconferences.org. He's going to be in Arlington Heights, uh, and it's... Um, uh, I'll give you the address here. It's uh, I've got a PO box here. <laughs> oh, here it is. Okay, here's the address. It is 2121 South Gebert, G-O-E-B-B-E-R-T, South Gebert Road in Arlington Heights. The phone number is 847-655-5011. Again, 847-655-5011. He's going to be at the conference there speaking. It's it's Forest View Educational Center. Forest View Educational Center. He's speaking at 315 on Saturday. Will be available uh, to if you have questions for him, want to talk to him. He's more than uh, he's more than happy to talk to you about whatever questions you may have. Uh, his website is not quite up yet. It's under construction, but you can you can you can bookmark it. It's allsaintsministry.org. Allsaintsministry.org. You can also call for his uh, one of his when his books when they come out 802-578-6554, 802-578-6554. So two books that will be out soon. Abortion is a, satan- a satanic sacrifice, and Satan loves me. Satan loves me not. And I've been promising that we're going to get him converted. So all right, you were handed a miraculous medal one day. Where how did this happen? <laughs> okay, I, I worked in a uh, jewelry kiosk in the mall, and. Uh, this was about four years ago. It was uh, January of 2008. And um, one day this woman came up, and she was looking to buy a pair of gold earrings. And uh, she, I showed her the perfect pair, and she was like, well, I'm going to come back in a little while. I'm shopping with my daughter in the mall, and I have to go, and I'll come back when I'm done with that. And these people, you know, people promise that. They never come back. But there was something about her. She was, like, just so honest and so, like, I don't know, it's almost angelic. Mm. And I, I, I knew she was coming back. Mm. So I put them to the side. And about three hours later, she comes back. And uh, we complete our transaction. And I, I sell miraculous metals in my jewelry kiosk, but I don't know what they are. Oh, okay. You know, as I have seen, we've got a whole section of them, and I don't know what they are. I'm like, what is this little disc here with a picture of a woman on it? Uh-huh. You know, why? why and, and we have lots of people come up and buy them. And I'm like, okay. You know, and, and sometimes I would even ask, hey, what is that? So you've handled them. They were in your hand, handing them to customers, right? Yeah, but, okay. you know, they're not blessed or anything. Okay, and, okay. And, and I, as well, you know, a lot of people that buy them don't know what they are. Okay. And I'm like, what is it? I don't know. Okay. Well, what, what, what is the big deal about it? I don't know. I'm giving it as a gift. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Okay. So um, uh, this woman, um, at the end of the, the transaction, we, we, you know, Christmas is over, and we're doing some kind of a special, and it's on the receipt. So I tell her, you know, if you call this number on here, take this survey, blah, 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 you could win X number of dollars, whatever. Here's the receipt. And she's like, oh, I have something for you, too. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's, 
my long hair. It's my, my ears are pierced. What, what is she looking at? Mm-hmm. What is she looking at that says I need to be saved? Because I know she's going to pull out like a uh, one of those Jack Chick yeah, pamphlets. pamphlets and, yeah, Jack T. Chick. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm going to say, yes, of course I'm going to read this. And when you turn around, I'm going to throw it in the trash and never look at it again. And that's what I'm expecting to see because I, I get that a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, Not since my conversion. Okay. But, but uh, but before I guess I put off like a negative light or aura or something, and then people thought that you know oh, we need to save this guy, wow. and uh, so she reaches into her purse and she pulls out this little metal round gold disc. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the same one that I'm wearing now, okay. and um, she's like, I have this for you, and I'm thinking, oh, see, I hand jewelry to people, you know, it's like I've never had somebody hand me jewelry and tell you, hey, this is for you, but she says uh, this is very powerful. You know, and I'm thinking, okay, I do magic, and I, I, I put curses on people or do hexes or spells or something, mm-hmm. and I can feel objects that have been given to me that have magical power, mm-hmm. and I can tell you if it's powerful. I can mm-hmm. tell you, oh, hey, this has been used in a spell. Mm-hmm. This was used in a very powerful spell. You know, you might want to be careful with this object, mm-hmm. or this has no power at all. Mm-hmm. And it's like you're telling me it's powerful, but it's got nothing. So in my ego, I'm like, I'm thinking, I'll tell her if it's powerful. She's going to hand it to me. It's going to be something blessed by her weak God. And, you know, and I'll tell her that there's no power in it whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So she hands it to me. And you know, I take it in my hand. And I close my hand. I close my fist around it. And suddenly, I'm not in the mall. Mm. I'm not in my kiosk. Mm. I'm in, like, this darkened area. And it's me and this woman. Mm. And I'm just like, how did this happen? Mm. And she starts telling me about the magic spell I did last night and how that I'm not supposed to do that. Wow. And that the blessed mother is calling me into her army hmm. and that, um, she's going to lead me to Jesus. And I'm thinking at this point, I'm like the blessed mother. Who's that? Hmm. Wow. You know, I don't know. I was raised Baptist. We had yeah. Mary gave yeah. birth to Jesus and that's the only thing you ever hear about, yeah. Yeah. you know, and she's just going on and on. She's telling me stuff. There's no way she could know. And she's telling me about the evil that I'm involved in, the constant mm-hmm. magic that I do, um, how that I need to, to not do that stuff. I need to forsake my evil life. And I'm thinking, how do, who are you? Mm-hmm. you know, how do you know me? Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know. I, I, the first time I saw you was three hours ago when you bought a pair of earrings. You know, it's like now all of a sudden you know all this stuff about me. Mm-hmm. And, and she's this, suddenly this metal gives me like, like there's Jesus. This is peace. This this is what yeah. if if I'd have known I could feel like this years ago, yeah. I would have done this. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Now at the same time, I kind of want to let go of the metal because this is majorly freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also scared to let go of the metal because you know I I cra- I grasped the metal in my hand and it transported me here. Mm-hmm. What's gonna happen when I let go of it? Yeah. You know, am I going to fall through space or am I going to be back in my kiosk or, you know, what's going to happen to me? Yeah. And this woman continually, it was like she talked me through salvation while I held on to this metal. I've never felt something as powerful as that in my life. Wow. It was mm. amazing that the peace that overcame, the peace that came over me, the, um, the, the place that it took me from and deposited me to was incredible. I mean... I eventually opened my hand and I was back in my kiosk and I'm back in the mall and I don't know if anybody came up to the kiosk at that point and thought what's wrong with him you know he's not why is he not paying attention to me mm-hmm. and this woman as well told me as I as I said her name was um Marianne and she was um Father Joe Whalen's assistant in the St. Raphael Healing Oil Ministry oh. and that actually brought me into that ministry I worked with them for about a year and a half um but while she was standing there talking to me, um, she got a phone call. And she had just told me that um, she works for a priest, Father Joe Whalen, who's so busy he can't breathe. You know, he doesn't have time to do anything. Well, she gets a call. And she goes, oh, hold on, this is him. So she takes the call, and I can hear him on the phone. And he says, there's a young man there with you that just converted. I need to talk to him. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, you know, I come from a magical world, so, you know, seeing this happen, I didn't know that things like that happened on the God side. Yeah. 
you know, I was just like, whoa, this is crazy. So she hands me the phone, and he's like, welcome to Catholicism. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's amazing. You, you know, he's like, welcome to the, you know, this is the, the, the light side over here. You know, it's like you, you just come from the dark side, and I'm thinking, how do you know? <laughs> you know, and, and it's like, you know, it was like so exciting for me. And, and I talked to this guy for like 10 minutes, you know, and here it is. She, I give her the phone back, and he's like, yeah, I don't have time to talk to you, and hangs up, uh-huh. you know, and then another woman within the ministry called me and or called her and was like make sure he has my phone number so he can call me once he's settled in mm-hmm. you know and then they they uh, this woman brought in like a a paper grocery bag so you know it's a big bag you know it's not like one of those little flimsy plastic walmart bags mm-hmm. and uh, a big bag full of um medals and rosaries mm-hmm. and books and pamphlets and bibles and just all kind of stuff to introduce me to catholicism and then she introduced me to her home priest, and um, that got me involved, you know, even more. And uh, I was uh, officially Catholic in May of 2008. 2008. Well, welcome to the light side. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, we have cookies, too. <laughs> so I know we are doggone it. The darn clock. We're up against the clock again, and we are going to have to. So, um the story is amazing, and it's uh, what's why this has such a happy ending. The mercy of God. Think about you know what you were involved in, just that your story about the abortion, and yet, yet God, He said, you know, as the scriptures say over and over, I remember not the sins of their past. When at the intervention, at you know, like the uh, the ones who brought the paralytic to Jesus uh, on the stretcher, remember right, the story. Right. He wasn't able to bring himself to Christ through the intercession of others. They brought him. This woman brought you to Christ in a very real sense, that uh, the mercy of God. So don't ever give up hope on anybody. Don't ever be afraid to lift someone up in prayer to bring them uh, to Christ, no matter how far off the path they've gotten. <laughs> You're about as far off as you could get. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, that, is a, that is an amazing story. I, I hope you have time to come and hear Zachary speak at the at the Come Holy Spirit conference at uh, the Forest View Educational Center. So he'll be there. The conference starts tomorrow night, and it'll go through uh, Saturday. Uh, that You can get information on the website, just comeholyspiritconferences.org. You can call 847-655-5011. The conference is at 2121 South Gebert Road in Arlington Heights. Gebert is G-O-E-B-B-E-R-T. Zachary will be there. He's actually going to be at my parish uh, tonight down in Piatone, which is uh, uh, way south of Chicago. It's uh, 511 North Conrad Street, Piatone, and we have to go. So we thank you for st- sticking with us. Thanks, Zachary, for being with us. Thanks, Father Steve, for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. So, all right, God bless. We will keep you in our prayers, and you do the same for us, okay? <laughs> all right. God bless. Thanks.